Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise the Holy Spirit. We thank you. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now, dear Lord, thanking you for allowing us to see another day on this side of the Jordan. We thank you, Lord, for our health and our strength. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the power and presence of, of you in our lives, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for uh, just being God and being God all by yourself. We ask you today for a special anointing, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we are going through many different things in our lives and things are going on in the world. And Lord, we just ask you for a word from you, O oh Heavenly Father. Speak, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Speak to our souls. Speak to us, dear Lord that we might know what you would have us to do, even in a time of trouble. You said that, that you are our refuge, you are our fortress, you are our strength in a time of trouble. So Lord, we just ask you to just come in and be who you are. Have your way, God. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray now over this technology, Facebook and conference calls and internet and all of that lord we pray that that everything works according to your will and your way and then lord we ask you that as this recording goes out later and those that are listening now that someone might be encouraged that someone might be blessed the lord we ask you the heavenly father to just touch as only you can we love you oh lord we love you and thank you lord for loving us first by showing all right, amen, amen. Um, Sister uh, Mich uh, Michelle just called, so uh, uh, as I was on the uh, uh, praying, um, would you, uh, Apostle Patrice, uh, text her and see what's going on? Um, I, th I think she did. Oh, I think she just locked, called in. Uh, Bless you, Sister Michelle, if that's you just called in. Sorry, I couldn't answer my phone. I'm on the conference call right now. Uh, our lesson for today comes from um, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 30, 39. Um, and uh, the title of today's lesson is A Call to Break Down Barriers. A call to break down barriers. This this lesson is a lesson dealing with uh, Philip, uh, one of the disciples, the one that was called um, with Stephen and 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 the other uh, disciples when there was an issue between the Grecian and the Hebrew women and widows, uh, uh, and he was one of those called we. We typically say that he is one of the first deacons. Um, that that's that's how we kind of look at Philip. Uh, but what we're here to do as we talk about this, uh, as we talk about this this morning, I I cannot uh, uh, just jump into this lesson, which I will in a minute, without speaking about what's going on uh, in the world today, what's going on. Uh, we have issues with uh, North Korea, um, where we might end up in a war anytime soon. Um, that's a great and heavy concern um, because that could easily start off into a World War III. Um, but the other concern of what happened on Friday night and Saturday morning in Virginia, uh, where uh, a white supremacist group had a march and then there was a peaceful march of uh, 
to counter them and uh, ended up one of the uh, white supremacists um, unfortunately drove his car and killed a person and, and several other people got injured. Also, we had a couple of policemen who were in their helicopter that, that also, I believe, got killed. Um, this, this, this whole hatred situation is heavy on my heart. And um, I, I, I want to just say that ain't how God created us. Hate never created anything good. Love always prospers. Love always creates good. And so as we look at this lesson today, we're talking about breaking down barriers. I, I, I have to say this right at the beginning. There is a barrier going on uh, in this world today where people uh, hate each other. That barrier has to be broken down. And the only way to break down that barrier of hatred is to counter it with love. Uh, we can be concerned. We can be fearful. Uh, but your fear will never break anything down. We, we can be wary. Wary never fix anything. Uh, but but what, we, what we really want to do is... is to extend our hands of love, uh, to, to pray for those that, that, that consider themselves our enemies, and then to take a stand, to take a stand. No matter where you are, live your life, whether in season or out of season, as a child of God. Be ready to show your love. Be ready to show that, that, that you truly believe and Jesus Christ. And then for those who, who, who claim Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord, and yet they're sprouting hate, um, uh, I, I, please, I, I, I plead with you and beg with you this morning to, to really evaluate your understanding of, and your interpretation of the word. Because if you truly interpret the word correctly, uh, it has nothing to do with hate, uh, and, and and we have to do something about it. So I'm, as I get into this lesson today, uh, um, this lesson is about breaking down barriers. This lesson is about crossing over into other people's culture. It, it, it's, it's about crossing over from your familiar place to 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 extending an arm to someone who is not of your culture, who's not of your race, who, 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 who is ready and willing to accept the word of God. And, and, and we must do that. We must do that. If it's just one person at a time, because you never know, that one person may be able to touch another person and that next person may be able to touch me. And so, so, so that's, that's where we are right now. Um, it, I, I consider, and I, I'm one that's going to say it, uh, this was a terrorist attack on American soil. And unfortunately, no one wants to address this terrorist attack. But that's what it was. It was a terrorist attack, internal. And, and internal to what is going on in our society today. So I, I'm, I'm off of my soapbox, but 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 I had to speak on this. I, I'm not a politically uh, person, a political person that comes and talks politics. But but this this here is is beyond politics. If we we start a race war in America, where would the world be? If we start a race war in America, where would we be in America? And I'm sorry, we, we can't go there because. We serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. And he said to us that we'll be known by our love, our love for one another. So let us love. So let's get into this lesson. Um, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 26. And uh, since it's a very familiar passage of scripture, uh, I'm allowing me to read it out of the New Living Translation. Uh, and it reads like this. As for Philip, 
an angel of the Lord said to him, go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasure of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under, under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And he was now returning, sitting in his carriage. And he was reading out loud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk alongside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the shearer, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with the same scripture. Philip told the good news about Jesus. And as they rode along, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop and they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away the eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That was Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 39 um, from the New Living Translation. As I told you, the, the overall title of this lesson is called to break down barriers. Um I'm going to approach it from that standpoint, but I'm going to talk about a new direction a little bit as we get into this lesson. Our key verse is verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, preaching unto him Jesus. The key concept for this lesson today is God directs us to different people and places so we can share the gospel with others. Let me read that again. God directs us to, to different people and places so that we can share the gospel with others. Our keys for kids, Jesus came to save everyone. Oh, hallelujah. He came to save everyone. I, 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 and, and we shouldn't be afraid to tell others about Jesus. When, when, when we hear the scripture that, 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 that's so prominent throughout our, out the world, everybody knows John 3.16. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That, that, that so love and, and included everybody in the world. Everybody in the world, not black, not white, not uh, uh, Asian, not, not not India, not not Hispanic. It, 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 it just ain't for any one group. It's for all groups, Jews and Gentiles alike, Jews and Greeks. It's for everybody, no matter what continent you're on. The word of God is sent that you might hear the good news of Jesus Christ and that you might be saved. Oh, hallelujah. 
So our lesson, our lesson facts that we're going to dig into today is to identify the cultural differences that separated Philip and the Ethiopian. The biblical principles that we're going to dig into is to know that it was God's will that Jesus came to save the world and that we need to be ready and willing to share him with people of all backgrounds. And our daily application. And this right here is, 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 if you don't get nothing else out of this lesson, is to think of ways that we can explain to people Jesus Christ, people of other cultures, people of different backgrounds. If we can learn and think of ways to explain it to them, whether it's with our lips or with our life. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, let's look at our first part of our scripture. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, uh, oh, let me say the outline. The outline is ready to go, ready to learn, and ready to respond. I started off this year uh, with a thing, get ready, get set, go. And this lesson here just, just brings that home. Ready to go ready to learn, and ready to respond. So let's look at our text, verses uh, uh, 26 and 27 of uh, Acts chapter 8. Listen to this, and I'm, I'm going back now. I'm going to read out of a New King James Version. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go forward towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to, to Gaza. This is desert. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, who had charged all her treasure, who had charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Oh, hallelujah. Ready to go. The background of this lesson is that the the church at Israel, I mean the church at Jerusalem, was now under persecution. Uh, in particular, uh, when the, the the seven quote unquote deacons um, were 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 given their assignment, one named Stephen was was so powerful in 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 in, 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 in the in the spirit. That he, he worked signs and wonders and he spoke so eloquently and, and they killed him. They, they got mad at him and, and Paul at that time or Saul was one of the ones that held his coat. Held the coats of the folks who stoned Philip. And so persecution has started uh, against the church in Jerusalem. Persecution was going on and because of persecution, Philip uh, uh, was led to leave Jerusalem and he went to Samaria. And while he was in Samaria, which is a different culture than Jerusalem, uh, Samaritans are, 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 are a mixed race where Jewish folks were a pure race. And, 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 and now here was Philip in this area and he had success. He had great success in Samaria. People were being saved and they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And with all of this success going on, yet God sent an angel. An angel of the Lord came to him and told him to go. Oh, many people today, if, 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 if they're in an environment, if they're in a church, and they are, they're in a ministry and they're having success, they don't want to hear your success is complete. I want you to go somewhere else. But that's how God is. God, God calls people into ministry. But not only does he call you once into the ministry, because you know that saying, well, well, man, when, hey, Doc, when did you get called? You know, and everybody talk about how they got called in the first time. But, 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 but it's more than just one call. You get called into ministry, but then you get called to other ministries. 
And so you have to hear that call. I, I look at myself and God called me into the ministry November 4th, 1990. And I accepted my calling and, and at that point. But, but, but since then, I've been called a pastor two churches and and then I've been called to to go into the jail ministry and and then God called me into this internet ministry while I'm doing conference calls and 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 doing Facebook so so that's a whole nother calling that he has called me into and we we as 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 Christians we must be obedient to God's calling and Philip was obedient he was obedient, and we'll get to that in a minute, but, but, but he was called to go. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go where God called you to go? And this time, when he called Philip, he said, go south down the desert road that, that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. God sent him into a dry place, a desert place a destitute place, a place where many people don't really want to go. But that's where God called him to. And, and we must realize that, that God, when he has a design and a plan and a purpose for our lives, he will send us in environments that, 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 that are different and unfamiliar to us. He'll call us from the familiar to the unfamiliar. I know I'm talking to somebody today because you're feeling a pulling to leave your familiar territory and go into an unfamiliar territory. Are you willing to go and do what God says for you to do? And so as he was going, as he started off, as he was being obedient to what God had told him to do, he met the treasure of Ethiopia, a eunuch, meaning that he was a man that had been emasticated. And, 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 and he had great authority under the queen of Ethiopia named Candace. Now, this name Candace, is, 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 it could be her actual name or it could be a title like like uh, Pharaoh or or, or or King's name or something like that. But 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 in any in any way, she uh, 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 um, uh, uh, her name is so powerful. It's it's a name of royalty, and, and God blessed me to have a Candace in my life. I, I, I we named our our, our our baby girl Candace. Because she's a queen and, and, and she's a chocolate queen. I love her because that, that, that we call her our little chocolate drop. And, and, and so this Ethiopian eunuch who was under uh, Queen Candace came to Jerusalem to worship. Oh, hallelujah. He came all the way from the, the continent of Africa to, 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 to Jerusalem to worship. He understood that that there was a, a God, uh, uh, that, that, that there was a one single God, and he came to worship. I've always liked this scripture because many people uh, have the assumption that everybody that comes from Africa uh, 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 only learn in America how to worship the true and living God. But but this text here says that, that even those Ethiopian eunuchs and all of Ethiopia knew that there was the one true and living God, and they came to worship him in Jerusalem. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the thing is, when, they came, when he came to Jerusalem, he probably was not apostolite yet. Because he, 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 he was a eunuch, that means that his body had been damaged, and, 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 and he couldn't go in to really uh, participate in all the things that was going on at the Jerusalem temple. He could come into the outer court, but he couldn't go into the inner court. But he was there because he believed and worshiped the true and living God. Oh, hallelujah. Not only was Philip ready to go into a different culture, but this Ethiopian eunuch was also ready to go. The Jews were of Jewish descent, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Ethiopian eunuchs were of African descent. And so they were together. And God knew 
I want you to hear me clearly. God knew where that Ethiopian eunuch was. And he sent Philip right where he is, right where he was. Why am I saying that? God knows where you are. He knows your cultural background. If you're a millennium, he knows that as millenniums, you hadn't been in church because the the the, the X generation and, 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 and the baby boomer generation, we didn't force our children, we didn't drip, drag them to church like the, 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 the greatest generation that lived before that. No, no, no. You, you, you didn't have that opportunity to learn about the word of God and learn how to worship him in spirit and in truth. But yet God knows where you are and he's going to send somebody to get through to you to let you know that God loves you just like he did for this Ethiopian eunuch. And verse 28 now, we go on. Not only was he ready to go, he was ready to learn. Ready to learn. Oh, hallelujah. We got to be ready to learn. Listen to verses 28 through 30. 28 to 30 says this. Um, and, and I'm going I'm to have to go back to 27 just so, so, so that it'll make sense. So he started out. And he met the treasure of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And he was now returning, returning to Ethiopia, sitting in his carriage. And he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk alongside the carriage. Philip ran over, heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? Philip went over and did what God told him to do. And he heard the Ethiopian eunuch reading the word of God from the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit led him, led Philip to go over. And he ran over and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. And he said, do you understand what you're reading? Do you understand the word that you're reading? Has God opened up your eyes to, to the word? Has God allowed you to get an understanding? This, 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 this need to, to learn should never stop. We should always be ready to learn. The God we serve is an awesome God, an unlimited God. And, and he, he has no limits. He has no bounds. And we have to be ready to learn. You will not and cannot learn everything about God on this side of the Jordan. Because we see through a glass darkly. But we should never, ever quit learning more and more about him. Because the more we learn about him, the more we become like him. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That's why we have to study God's word to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of God. Don't just buy in to what someone else is saying. Read the word for yourself. I, I, I spoke earlier about what was going on in 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 uh um in in Virginia and, and, and the problem is that someone has told the people, the white supremacists, that they are the only people. Someone has told them that 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 they are the only ones that have the right to follow after the true and living God. 
And, 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 and I'm here to tell you that's a lie straight from hell. And, and they need to read the word for themselves and understand that God is a God of love and not a God of hate. Oh, hallelujah. And so, Philip, being obedient, went to him and then he asked them the question, do you understand what you're reading? At that point, the Ethiopian eunuch responded. He was ready to respond. Sometimes all we have to ask someone is a simple question. And that simple question will lead them to open up and respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen to verses 31 and 32. I might go all the way to 34. Yeah, already 34. Listen to what the man replied. What the Ethiopian eunuch's response was. He said, how can I understand unless someone instructs me? Oh, praise God. If you don't have an understanding of God's word, ask somebody. And more importantly, ask the Holy Spirit. Because he will lead you and guide you into all the doctrine of Christ Jesus. And tell you what thus says the Lord. And, and so the Ethiopian eunuch says, and he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. He, 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 he's now getting an invitation from the Ethiopian eunuch to come and share the word with him. Oh, hallelujah. And so, Philip got up in the carriage and, and he was sitting with him. And, and in verse 32, the passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the shearers and he did not open his mouth. He was humble and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants for his life? was taken from the earth. And the eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or somebody else? This comes from Isaiah chapter uh, 53, verses seven and eight. And this was that, that great passage of scripture that Philip put together, talking about the suffering uh, a lamb, the suffering savior. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulders. And this particular passage, he says, look, uh, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb was silent before the shearer. And he did not open his mouth. As we say, he didn't say a mumbling word. When they took Jesus to the cross, when they, when they hung him high and stretched him wide, he didn't call down a legion of angels to come and rescue him. He simply said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then he gave up the ghost and told the Lord, into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Philip took this opportunity to, 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 to listen to the Ethiopian eunuch and where he was many times. We don't take the time to listen to people, to see where they're at. We got to take the time. And when we take the time to listen to where they're coming from, God will lead us to where he wants to lead that person. Oh, hallelujah. Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to go? Well, if you are, 
then there's someone ready to respond. So Philip went from investigating what was going on to an invitation. And from an invitation, he gave an interpretation. Listen to verse 35. So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He told him the good news about Jesus right from the scripture that he was at. God will meet us right where we're at. No matter what we're going through, no matter how difficult life has been, God will meet you right where you at. He's a very present help. So, so, so you and I must be always open to where God, when God comes in, excuse me, when God wants to come in and invite him in. And he will give us the good news about Jesus Christ. He'll send somebody to speak a word. That would encourage us. Speak a word that will strengthen us. Speak a word that will help us to keep pressing on towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And so, after Philip told him about Jesus, and I could hear Philip, yeah, when they're talking about that he was a lamb to the slaughter, he's talking about the fact that he went to the cross and he died upon the cross. When they say that he was humiliated and received no justice, they're talking about how they beat him and how they put a crown of thorns on his head and how they gambled for his, 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 his robe at the feet of the cross and how they talked about him and told him, you saved others, save yourself. And when it says he has no descendants, it says that, 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 in his lifetime, because they killed him at, 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 at such a young age that he never had children, physical children. Because his life was taken from the earth. The Jews interpret this scripture. They, they say, well, you know, as, as Philip had asked the question, was it the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Well, some of the Jewish interpreters say he was, Philip was, I mean, uh, uh, Isaiah was talking about himself. Then others said, no, he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about someone else. And then they also say, well, well, he was talking about the Messiah. But yet and still today, some of the Jews don't accept Jesus as, his, as the Messiah. But thanks be to God, we have the good news. And we believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the one sent by God. Thank you, Lord, that he died on the cross for our sins and that you raised him from the dead. Oh, hallelujah. And so Philip got the invitation and he gave him an interpretation. And now, in this part where... Ethiopian eunuch is ready to respond. It says in verse 36, as they rode along, they came to some water. And the Ethiopian eunuch said, look, there is some water. Why can't I be baptized? Oh, hallelujah. This Ethiopian eunuch, after hearing the good news of Jesus Christ, he believed, he believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He believed what Philip had shared with him, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ from the scripture. He believed. And now he wanted to be baptized. Oh, that's the response we always want. I'm like this, I, 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 I rejoice like the angels in heaven, when someone responds to the gospel with belief in Jesus Christ and want to be baptized, there is no greater joy in the world than to see someone coming to Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And, 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 and I'm one of these people. I'm, I'm kind of greedy about that. I just want 
folks to come to Christ. And, and, and I like to give them the word of Jesus Christ and, and, and give them the good news and the gospel. And when they come, I'm just as excited as all get out. And so, this gospel that we preach includes everyone, even folks not like ourselves. Philip was a Jew. The Ethiopian eunuch was from Ethiopia, of African descent. But the good news of God crossed over and the barrier was broken down. Oh, if we could break down the barriers in this world today. If we could break down the barriers between the races and the cultures. Oh, hallelujah. How do we break them down? The answer is always the same. Jesus. That's the good news to break down the barriers. And so, the text goes on that he ordered the carriage to be stopped and they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Oh, hallelujah. Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. And tradition has it that when that Ethiopian eunuch went back to Ethiopia, he shared the good news with all of the Ethiopians from the queen all the way down to everybody in the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. A whole continent received the good news because Philip shared it with the Ethiopian eunuch and that Ethiopian eunuch shared it with others. And so, after he believed the Ethiopian eunuch and was baptized by Philip. The text says in verse 39, when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched away Philip. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. God gave the Ethiopian eunuch a sign by taking Philip up, snatching him away at an instant. The Ethiopian eunuch may have thought that he, he was in the presence of God himself when Philip gave him the word and took him away. Oh, hallelujah. And it says he continued on his journey, rejoicing. Oh, I'm saying something to somebody. You got to continue on your journey. Rejoicing. Because you know the risen Savior. You know the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep rejoicing. Rejoice always. And I tell you, as you rejoice, as you show your joy for believing and trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's contagious. Smile. Praise God. Give him glory. And it'll attract people. Because everybody wants to have joy. And Jesus is the greatest joy in the world. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I got joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart, I got joy because I serve a risen Savior. Oh, hallelujah. As we get ready to close this lesson, here are some points to ponder. We should take advantage of every opportunity to share the gospel with those around us. But not only those around us, we should reach out to those that are not a part of our group, our culture, our race, and share Jesus Christ with them. 
Oh, hallelujah. When God speaks and directs us, we need to obey him. We don't always need to know how God is planning to use us. But we should be willing and available to be used by him no matter where we go. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us divine appointments to share Jesus Christ. May you use our time of study and prayer, our preparation to say the right things at the right time in the right way. That somebody might be saved that somebody might be encouraged. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Before I close this recording, I always like to give those who are listening on Facebook and on the conference call an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Let us pray the prayer of salvation. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was raised from the dead. I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life from this day forward. Please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thought to remember, people of all cultures, black, white, red, yellow, all people need Jesus. And we all have a responsibility to share. Share the love. May God bless you and keep you. And I like to always say to the church over in Kenya, the New Harvest Church in Kenya, God bless you and keep you. And may God continue to watch over you. Be blessed, Facebook. If you want to join us on the conference call to discuss this lesson, you can call at 910-218-0531. 910-218-0531. Be blessed.